Hello once again, my name is Scipio, aka The People's Gamer, and today it's time for my first ever movie review. Today I'm going to be reviewing Prometheus, a science fiction movie directed by Ridley Scott and written by John Spates. Prometheus is set in the same universe as Alien, but is not a direct prequel, so keep that in mind when you're watching this movie. Prometheus has a very different feel to Alien, and should not be compared, unless of course you're comparing the characters and stuff like that. Although, because it's set in the same universe and it's by the same director, Ridley Scott, um, it's naturally going to be compared at certain points. So, the uh, movie's set in the year 2089. Now, I believe the first Alien movie takes place in 2122. At least that's what James Cameron said. Um, he was the guy behind Aliens, by the way. In the special edition of Aliens, it's revealed that Ripley's daughter died in 2177, at the age of 66. Two years before Ripley is rescued. Which would mean that Aliens takes place in 2179. Ripley is told when she was in hypersleep for 57 years. So, 2179, take away 57, equals 2122. But, according to Ripley Scott, Prometheus takes place about 30 years before Ripley is even born. 2093 is the exact year as told in the beginning of the film. This would mean that Ripley wasn't born until 2123 or later, and Ripley was minus 12 years old when she gave birth to her daughter. And that's pretty fucking impossible, so I'm going to take... I don't know who's decided to take it for the dates. So make your mind up for who you want to, like, believe. Um, but I um, think that um, Prometheus is in the right time zone to be a prequel, even though it's not. Um, if you follow both guys, so James Cameron or Ridley Scott, you can listen to both of them if you want, or either one. Um, so the story of Prometheus focuses on an archaeologist couple, and Elizabeth Shaw is played by Numi Rapace, who starred in The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo as the main protagonist, and... Um, Charlie Holloway, played by Logan Marshall Green, who is in Law and Order. Now, Numi is really good in this movie. I felt she was one of the best actors and characters in the movie, alongside Michael Fassbender. Um, and she was also the most believable. I liked how her religion and her scientific work both contrasted and contradicted each other, and how, through all her hardships, she still believed in God. There was this one scene at, near the end, um, which kind of stuck with me, where she was asked by... One of the uh, crew members, do you still believe in God? She said yes, after all that she'd been through. So the Discoverer's star map among several unconnected ancient cultures, along the lines of the kind of main lines, and the uh, Neanderthals. They interpret this as an invitation from the engineers, which are like the creators of humanity. The forerunners, if you will. Um, Peter Wayland, played by Guy Pearce, is the founder of Wayland Corporation. And these are the guys who betrayed Ripley and wanted the alien for themselves, so if you've seen Alien, or any of the Alien movies for that matter, Aliens, plural, um, Alien Resurrection, Alien 3, uh, you'll have some bitter feelings towards these chaps. Now, they fund the creation of this scientific vessel, Prometheus, to follow the map to the distant moon LV-223. The ship's crew travels in stasis, uh, while the android David monitors the voyage. Now, one thing I liked about David, um, who was played by Michael Fassbender, as I just mentioned before, um, was his kind of creepy portrayal as android. He like goes around the place and people are suspicious of him with his little suspicious agenda. Um, it's easily the best performance in Prometheus because he has fans making assumptions about him because, uh, let's face it, androids don't really have a nice history in Alien Universe. Um, in Alien 1, Ripley was betrayed by that bold android guy. In Alien 2, no one believed that um, android was nice. But... That's what he did, and that's um, that's what makes his role so nice. So, um, in 2093, the ship arrives, and its crew are informed of their mission to find the engineers. Mission director Mildred Vickers orders them to avoid direct contact if the engineers are found. The Prometheus lands near a structure, and a team is sent to explore within. As you can imagine, the shit hits the fan. So that's kind of a little sum up of the story. Now, one nice thing that I noticed was um, the ship Prometheus, I'll show you a picture as I'm talking, is in the film Alien. As Ripley and the crew land, you'll see the Prometheus ship in the background, poking out the ground. And um, in Alien, they actually go into Prometheus, the ship, which is really nice. So, um, not sure if loads of people noticed that, or just me, or whatever, but um, that's one nice thing I noticed. Um, so, there are some parts that are pretty messed up. Like when Milburn and Fifield are going around the tunnel, um, because all the other guys have buggered off. 
and they come across this plant-like creature, this kind of lizard thing, and um, now any sane motherfucker would run like Usain Bolt and hide. But no, Milburn feels the need to pet this nasty little thing. Um, now why the fuck would you do that? It's not damn crazy. All the movies you've ever seen, does anyone stroke the fucking bad guy? No, they fucking don't. If Ripley stroked Alien, she would not have been there very long. In Lord of the Rings, does Frodo give an awkward blowjob on his way to Mortal? No, because he's not a fucking Down Syndrome. And he has standards. Now, Milbourne, or Milburn, has a bloody PhD. But the only thing he would get a PhD in is for being the biggest spastic on Erex, the planet. But I did, however, like the chemistry between Milburn and Fifield, or the lack of any. As it was nice to see a badass and a nerd have to get along and uh, go through the tunnels, it was really funny. And um, it was really funny when Milburn's arm was broken by the creature, him and Fifield were panicking, but then again I just guess I have a messed up sense of humour. There are some really nice things that made this movie one of my favourites, especially the film's slick cinematography and gorgeous design. Scott gives us some striking imagery in glorious, well employed 3D. That is hard to get out of your head, even hours after you've left the cinema. Another great actor was Charlie's Theron, hopefully I'm saying that right, as uh, Meredith Vickers. She was really good and uh, she was calm a bit, like a passive aggressive person you actually want to get to know. Um, and when she burned Charlie Holloway without filling through her, um, she was pretty badass too. I love the way that uh, Scott raises questions about creation and mortality, but also leaves many questions and queries unanswered. Now, the film does leave many questions unanswered, um, but I think that's because it leaves room for a sequel, and uh, here's hoping there is a sequel, because this movie will honestly draw my top ten movies. Some other things that I liked were the um, alien appearance near the end, um, when the alien organism came out of the engineer, because I thought that was kind of um, telling you how the alien was created, and uh, made you want to watch Alien again after knowing how it was created. The captain was also a nice character, and he had a pretty cool accent. Right, so in conclusion, I thought this movie was awesome, um, an automatic classic with a great story, only made greater by the actors and characters. A lot of it made you ask questions, not only about the film itself, but creation, and why we're here. I think many people um, were going in the cinema looking for an Alien Minus One, an Alien prequel, um, but it's not, it's a whole different thing, it's not a horror per se, but it's uh, cool, it's hell, and worth a watch. I can promise you won't get bored in the two hour running time. And now for the final score. I'm going to do it a little different to most reviews, I'm going to do subcategories. So uh, first off is best in class, now this goes to the best actor or actress in the movie, and it goes to Michael Fassbender, because he was an awesome android with a stone cold face, and he acted suspiciously. Um, I would give this movie 9 engineers out of 10 because it's awesome um, and it's good and like I said before there's no reason before um, so hopefully you enjoyed this first of a movie review it was recommended that I do a movie review or requested even by a um, youtuber um, if you enjoyed it show some love in the comments show some love in the um, like system and if you disagree with anything I've said in this video then comment below and I'll have a little chat with you talk about the movie and find out why you didn't like it and see you next time I've been Sipio this has been you and I'll see you next time